How's it going everyone? Tim here, TRD Adventures. Hope everyone's all well. Hope everyone had a great holiday weekend. Hope if you were searching, shopping, hope you were able to get in on some of the amazing and huge list of Black Friday deals that happened um, throughout the holiday weekend and through the end of the month. So um, be sure to check out some of those are running through the end of the month. So be sure to get in on those if you are looking for anything just in general. So meantime, Mitch, before we have lots of stuff coming through the videos. So we're going to start on today, a little quick video. Um, we're going to go deeper into class zero. What do we have here? Well, see my previous videos, we know what this normally is. Well, this is no longer my Vanquish VS410 Pro. Um, this is setting on a newly acquired um, RC four wheel drive Trailfinder 2 uh, chassis that I just got in through trade. Just simply swap the body over from the VS410 as it is currently uh, stripped down and decommissioned. So reason for that, I've mentioned several before in the videos, class zero. Something I want to get into a little bit more. Um, had a blast doing it down at Crawl Palooza. Uh, we managed third down there for their first trial run. They'll be doing it again this next year. And we are going to be introducing some Class Zero into our local comps, stuff like that, leading up to our end of the year throwdown. So, is it performance wise my smartest move? Probably not. The VS410 Pro was a beyond capable candidate for Class Zero. But, I wanted to introduce a challenge, and I've always wanted the Leaf Spring vehicle, so this is the route we went. I know I can make the Leaf Spring vehicle capable enough and a good performing truck for those courses. I watched several Trailfinder 2s and other Leaf Spring vehicles mow down through those courses. I believe the guy that took first was in a modified TF2. Uh, second place was my friend Jake. He was in a modified TF2, and then I was third with a VS410. Super excited to get this going. I said this, as we've seen before, this is just the RC four wheel drive, uh, 1985 Toyota four runner body. I have the um, topper removed. We have metal RC four wheel drive roll bar in here. Cool thing, it's got all the functioning, uh, doors, lights, tailgate, all that stuff there. So we do have some plans, bumper work. I uh, just swapped this bumper over, uh, just a regular RC four wheel drive bumper here. I'm not a huge fan of it on this setup. I want it to go more sleeker. I want a single bar style bumper here. I do have a bumper that I have and picked out for the front here. I just need to do some uh, work here. I need to remove the last bit of the stock bumper there. Then I can get that mounted up and be good to go there. Uh, doors. Now, this is something that will kind of be event to vent based as far as how much they let you do. Now, these are tube doors that are in there. They function. Now, with this truck in real life, one to one, you could remove the doors. We have several of them in town that their doors are off more than they are on. But sometimes it's not considered a complete body. They only allow that for Jeeps, um, which is kind of discrimination if you ask me. The tube doors are pain in the butt to remove. So I want to leave them in there. But what I'm going to do is get some thin sheet metal aluminum. And I'm actually going to just shape out where the lower half of the door is and then figure a way to either um, attach it to the outer outside of the tube frame or on the inside, you know, just a little bit, but the doors will be intact, but it's still a little bit of that feature. Straight legal, follow all the rules, and still look good and have an aggressive look still. So that's the plan there as far as exterior-wise. Let's go ahead, pull this body off, and it does have the full um, interior, everything like that. I trimmed a few pieces um, when it was on the Vanquish for the VFD to come through. So underneath here, wheels and tires. These are the uh, Incision Roswell's 1.9s with um, the some Element RTR uh, General Grapplers. These are 155 tires stretched on the 1.9 wheel, so they are 3.85 inches tall. Um, so as far as Class Zero goes, I believe Sorka Light does have the tire size, max tire size listed at 4.19, but vents and everything like that can change rules at their discretion. And most Class Zero rules that I've seen, all of them have tires listed, max tires listed at four or less. So 3.85 is my tire of choice for class zero that um, I run. So, and these work right now just to give me the feel for the tire size and stuff like that. But I am ordering set of the Proline Crawler uh, class zero tires, which are a one nine tire, uh, 3.85 inches tall. So I don't have to stretch them on the wheels that are already one nines. And I can get them in G8 or Predator. I'm leaning more towards G8 myself. And underneath here, I mean, nothing too traveling. This is just a Trailfinder 2 that I've just started, but we did immediately go to work on it. Um, hit the Trailfinder 2 pages. Lots of research. Places that make TF2 uh, performance parts, stuff like that. What are some do's? What are some don'ts? You know, just to 
general ideas and tips and tricks. Hey, if you mod this, it does this and stuff like that. So again, there's plenty of information and stuff out there. Um, and this has been around for a while. Um, RC Crawler, if you're not part of the, don't want to be any on the social media, the RC Crawler forum um, does have a lot of information and lots of good stuff on there too. So always places to look and stuff like that. Sometimes a good Google search goes a long way. As far as actual TF2 here, this was a TF2 kit. This does have a two-speed transmission. Um, that will be something that I address down the road. I'm not a fan of the two-speed on the TF2, uh, so I just simply have it locked in low gear and secured so it doesn't move. Now, I probably won't stick with this transmission. I'm waiting for either, I'm waiting to see the new R4 transmission with the hammer case from RC four wheel drive, ready to see it drop. That's a potential transmission option because it looks really good. It's very scale and better placement, everything like that. The other option is taking the VFD out of the decommissioned BS410 and fitting it in here. Um, my friend, uh, brother-in-law Jake, he has a VFD in his trail finder and it works great. It's just a couple simple 3D printed parts and some skids and everything works. So that is an option. It's just, I'm not tackling that right now. That'll come a little bit down the road. Electronics, servo-wise, we are running a Thruvalis RC G11 servo. Um, $50 servo is hard, hard, hard to beat. And it has plenty of power to move these tiny tires and wheels around. So does it with ease on this build. Uh, motor and ESC, right now, we just swapped the um, Hobbywing Axe R2 2800 kV motor out of the BS410 Pro and simply put it in here just to get it rolling, just to get me on the rocks and see how I'm liking it and stuff like that. Um, I do have uh, a Kratos motor coming. It may find its way in here if I don't put it in something else, but for right now, this is where we're at and it gets me rolling. I've already started working on, um, I got the RC four-wheel drive um, interfinners there for the forerunner, tuck it in there, you know, close those gaps. I do have them for the front. I've got them cut out. I just got to hit them with some paint and get them drilled and get them installed. And that'll really close up all of that electronic area, make it nice, more eye friendly. Underneath here, um, we have went ahead and got the um, Bowhouse RC high clearance skid there for the TF2. Now the stock one is big, bulky, and metal, and it is a rock grabber. This already taken out today is much, much smoother. You have gained a little bit of clearance there raising it up and it just it's able to slide over the rocks immensely easier it was it it was night day difference between taking out one day this weekend and the very next day with the skid also from bowhouse rc we got the cnc rear shackle mount here and um, from a m garage on its way we do have the uh, reverse shackle mounts for the front on the way as well i believe i did order the plus four um for it you know just to get the leaf spring geometry and stuff like that everything there looking good shocks uh, these are still the stock shocks that came with it i just simply added the four wheel drive the uh, scale shock boots on there again just for some of that scale factor um, i will probably order one of the, the old man emos or the bill scenes just again for that scale factor right here again just some scale factor we added the um, rc four wheel drive rancho uh, steering link stabilizer which just looks good you know just adds just a little bit more there and then i have started working on some leaf springs Again, like I was saying, doing some research, finding some do's and don'ts. I initially installed the RC four-wheel drive red super soft leaf springs. Then it was told me, hey, that's, yes, they work, but be careful. They will break. They are softer. So um, I did put a helper in with them just to you know, help with them being so soft and maybe keep with their strength. But I can tell this from just taking it out this weekend. Uh, looking at it, I have bent these very, very significantly. So I probably will be changing back out to... Uh, the stock leaf pack, but just a single, just a single main leaf. But again, all tuning a part of the part of it. Also, um, we did add the RC four wheel drive uh, forerunner or trail finder to exhaust pipe here. Don't know if it'll stay. It looks good for right now. Uh, a few other things we will be getting from A and M Garage is um, the high clearance skid underneath and the sliders as well. They're just nice, clean, flat sliders that look great. The quality on them is really good. Install looks easy and again, performance, this, that ability to slide and just gain that much more area there is going to be really, really good there. Already enjoying the challenge of this, in my opinion. I mean, it's one thing like the VS410 Pro, awesome truck. It's already super capable. Even with the hard body on it, it was very capable. This is a challenge. This, well, for me, this is a challenge. This is going to take some work to get it, you know, capable-ish as it can be for a class zero, super small tire truck. But it's going to be really, really fun. And it's kind of thinking outside the box from what I'm normally used to. 
the leaf springs and stuff like that. So I'm really excited for this. We'll get some more parts and everything else uh, throughout winter and we'll get some other videos going. We'll get some runtime. Believe in the running video I posted from this last weekend, there is um, a couple little shorts of the of this in action there, having the good old time. Uh, Theron also joined in on the Class Air Leaf Spring uh, crew and he got the RC four wheel drive, the full 85 Forerunner, um, which looks super great. And that is something um, I will be getting that RC four wheel drive 22 RE uh, scale engine uh, for the former. That is going to look great. So in the meantime, as always, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel down below. Uh, stay tuned. More videos to come. Plenty of stuff um, coming in. We got the new Axis motors in. Been driving it in the Wraith all, uh, all weekend. We have uh, one more Axis motor to install. We have the new 3 barrel RC Kratos motor on the way as well and a few more things and some TTC videos. So stay tuned. And in the meantime, everyone have a great one and crawl on.